We have seen now that current carrying loops can produce magnetic fields and the field configuration by a current carrying loop is in such a way that it resembles exactly like a tiny magnet and in the previous video we even saw that the origin of the magnetism actually comes from a current carrying loop. So that's fine. But here's the thing. If you take a big and strong bar magnet, the magnetic field configuration looks somewhat like this. What you can see, um, it's not very accurate, but what you can see that inside the bar magnet, the magnetic field is very nice and very strong and pretty much it's uniform. That's what is important. It's uniform over there. However, as you can see, the magnetic field over here in our current loop is not very uniform. It's extremely strong right at the center, but then as you go off, it tapers off very quickly. So two, qu two important questions. One is how do you produce a big and strong magnetic field? So you want strong magnetic field. And the second important question would be, how do you produce a uniform field? Because you see it's pretty much uniform over here. So how do we make a uniform magnetic field? If you are able to generate a strong and a uniform magnetic field using just the current, that system is what we're going to call as an electromagnet because that will be true replacement for a bar magnet. You see, a single current carrying coil is just a replacement for a tiny magnet, but not for a bar magnet, like, you know, a really big bar magnet. And so that's the idea behind solenoids. Solenoids or electromagnets are these things that resemble or that mimic a bar magnet. All right, so how do you construct one? The idea is very simple. Instead of having one coil, what if we had a second coil, which also produce a similar magnetic field? So what if you had two coils like this? So imagine you have a second coil this way, and let's say you keep the second coil coaxial with the first one. All right, something like this. All right. Well, over here in my drawing, we can now see that the magnetic fields start intersecting with each other. But in reality, you have learned that field lines can never ever intersect. So instead, what will they do is the field lines, wherever they are intersecting right now, they are going to merge and become the field configuration is going to change. So, you know, uh, approximately this is what's going to look like. Voila! This is the new field configuration. The fields have merged together. They're not very accurate, but you know, that's, that's the idea behind that. And now you can pretty much see where I'm going with this. Although these field lines are again, not very, very strong. You can see a very strong magnetic field here. It tapers off, but then it get, again gets sucked in and you're gonna get a very strong magnetic field. What do you think we're gonna do now in order to even if, make this even stronger? You know, if you want to make this very strong in this region, I think you can guess it. You know what we do next? We paste another such current carrying coil. So let's do that very quickly. Another such one and paste it not here, but paste it right in between them. Like so. Again, the field lines right now because of my crude drawing appears to be intersecting and all messy, but the field lines are eventually going to work out in such a way they will never intersect. All the intersecting parts are actually going to merge together. So this is what's going to happen. Voila. And I'm pretty sure now you can understand what to do next. The field lines are becoming even more straighter and straighter. Again, it looks a little messy. Hopefully you're able to get the idea. So what if you add lots and lots and lots of turns? So for example, I'm gonna make this fully messy now, right? So what if you add lots of turns like that? Then can you visualize what's going to happen? Well, I'm not going to sit and draw that myself. I've already drawn it. And this is what it's going to look like. Ta-da! Oops, let me shift that a little bit. Okay, so this is what it would look like. You would now see that all these bumps created by every single coil, it's gonna be so tiny that bumps can be neglected and we are now creating a very strong magnetic field. And notice that this magnetic field configuration is pretty similar to what we have over here. The only difference is I have not drawn the field lines outside but that's what they're gonna do. Even actually, you know what? These field lines are actually gonna go all the way and come back over here. 
sorry if that's a bad representation these field lines are also going to you know eventually they're going to merge but you know what's important what's important is the magnetic field outside the electromagnet is almost negligibly small i mean look at the field lines they are so far away but the field inside the electromagnet my gosh look at the field lines they are so close to each other and this is exactly what we needed to create a big and strong and also notice a uniform magnetic field and so that's what a solenoid is so if someone asks you what a solenoid is and how it works well it's very simple it's just lots and lots of coils and then you energize that coil meaning you put a current through that and every single loop is going to create this dipole field but when you add up all these dipole fields then you get a very nice magnetic field strength and that's an electromagnet for us and where do we use these solenoids well they have all sorts of applications they have applications in electromagnetism which we will learn a little bit later um, but as of now I will give you a couple of applications one is in electromagnetic locks I will not tell you exactly the working behind that but it, it goes somewhat like this imagine you have a coil over here and you have some sort of um, a ferromagnetic material over here you know something made up of iron or something like that that easily gets attracted by the magnetic field you can think of it this way if you energize this coil that means if you send a current through that coil that current is going to cause an immense surge of magnetic field. The magnetic field is going to be formed. Oops, not like that. You see, it's very difficult for me to draw like this, okay? So please excuse my drawing. But it's going to create a very strong, very nice magnetic field. And uh, this magnetic field is going to actually attract this ion. And the ion is going to whoop, it's going to stick to the magnet. All right, so as long as the current runs, the ion is going to go and whoop, stick to it. And if the current stops running, well, the iron no longer has to stick to it. And so using this principle, you can actually make an electromagnetic lock. And the lock owes to the fact that the electromagnetic force over here, the magnetic force is extremely strong. You cannot fiddle with using mechanical strength. So that's one application of electromagnetic, um, of solenoids. But then you have another application. I'll tell you a more day-to-day -day life application. I mean, even this is more day-to-day. -day. In fact, you know what those locks that you mag that you put a pin over there, and you know it locks up. Such safes, for example, safes that we use electromagnetic electric safes today, they actually use a solenoid to lock it. Things are complicated over there, but that's the basic idea. I'll tell you another application. It's a day-to-day -day, day life application. In fact, you are using that application right now. Speakers. Have you ever wondered how a speaker's work? To understand how a speaker works, you need to understand the most human speaker that we ever have. I'm sorry, that was terrible, okay? I'm talking about the vocal cavity. Do you know how a vocal, how, how do we even produce sound? You have some sort of a vocal cavity over here, this is, and you have some sort of a membrane, okay? And this membrane just oscillates up and down, okay? Think of it like a stretched rubber sheet or like a trampoline, yeah, that's the best example. That that thing, you know, that thing goes up and down, it oscillates up and down, and that makes the air molecules over here also oscillate up and down. Now, what, what is important is, when you're speaking, you're making it oscillate up and down at certain number of oscillations per second. It could go anywhere from, say, 500 oscillations per second all the way to 10,000 oscillations per second. That is a normal speech of, of humans, okay? And, and similarly, um, molecules, or air molecules also vibrate at the same frequency and then eventually the air molecules transfer these vibrations to other air molecules and so on and so forth eventually they make it w make their way into your ears I mean the air molecules don't move from here to here but instead there are air molecules everywhere like right? they transmit the information and eventually they start agitating the air molecules in your ears and finally there is an eardrum and that eardrum starts oscillating with exactly the same frequency as what the vocal cord is oscillating and that's how you hear sound that's the basic mechanism now what if you want to make this artificial source then you will need something <coughs> um, to make you know a, a stretched membrane to go up and down and a speaker is the one in which an, uh, a loudspeaker I, what i mean is a loudspeaker okay a loudspeaker like the one you use in your in your in your in your computers or even in your headphones tiny tiny loudspeakers okay in that case, what makes them go up and down, you know? So what, what, how do you do it? Well, so you can take a cup like this. 
So what you can do is you imagine there's a cup like this and the base of the cup represents the membrane which is going to oscillate up and down. The question is what's going to make it oscillate up and down? So you know what you do? You take a permanent magnet, something like this. You attach this permanent magnet to this, you fuse it like you know you can put a gum over there or something like that. You make this an integral part of this. And then what you can do is, you can actually take some sort of a, uh, what can you do? You can take some sort of a support from here and uh, and you you have a solenoid over here. So what you do is, over here you can use something cylindrical over here like a ferromagnet or something like that, attach it. And over that, wrap up these coils. So you know what you should do? You should wrap up the solenoid coils. And this is where you send electricity. So the way a speaker works is this. The sound signals are actually encoded in terms of alternating current, as in the current once runs this way and the current runs this way. And it's this alternating current that is represented as the oscillations, all right? So instead of air molecules oscillating inside your computer, at, I mean right now inside your computer, what's happening is uh, over ele here electrons are oscillating this way. That produces an oscillating current and that oscillating current, that means a current that's changing its direction, produces an oscillating magnetic field. So there's a magnetic field that runs this way, but that magnetic field doesn't have a specific direction. It oscillates, all right? Sometimes it's this way, sometimes it's that way. Now when it's in the way I've shown, this part behaves like the north, this part behaves like the south, that attracts this magnet and that pulls the membrane down. And when the current switches direction, well this becomes south and this becomes north and that repels the magnet and that makes it go up. Now here's the cool part, okay? The number of oscillations made by the electrons per second directly translate to the number of flippings in the magnetic field and that directly translates to number of attraction and repulsions in the magnetic field which eventually translate to the number of oscillations of this diaphragm which is at the base base of the speaker that's amazing isn't it so you can ask yourself you, you may ask now what creates these oscillating electrons well that's where the other part of the system is a microphone that's what a microphone does. A microphone is the one that can, that's exactly the opposite. You know, a microphone works in exactly the opposite ways. In a microphone, what happens is you have sound waves and the sound waves are connected into electrical signals. But uh, a speaker is where electrical signals get connected into sound waves. And that's how sound waves are generated. And that's how you enjoy your music. And even right now, you're enjoying his amazing lesson on physics. All right, so tell more people about these amazing lessons on physics. And I hope today you were able to learn about solenoids, the intuitive idea behind how solenoids create strong magnetic fields and some of their applications, hopefully. So I will see you next time. Stay tuned for more.